Supreme Court with the former Prime Minister and God, the, the Chief Justice in the Supreme Court said that all state institutions have collapsed in Pakistan. So this has happened during these, the time these two parties have been in power. You're talking, uh, can I just feel... say that, you're talking about the PPP, the Pakistan People's Party, the party led by the um, Bilawal Bhutto, the Bhutto family, and also the ruling party, <coughs> the Pakistan Muslim League N, and you're referring to Nawaz Sharif, the former Prime Minister. But look, they may um, have been discredited in your eyes, but nevertheless, in order for you to do better than these two parties in the election, a march... National Gallup poll puts your party, the PTI, at 24% and the ruling PMLN at 36%. So you've got a huge mountain to climb to do better. Uh, Zen, these uh, surveys are quite misleading. I mean, if you look at the election which David Cameron uh, contested in England, uh, they were supposed to be level with the Labour Party and there was a landslide victory. So. This is a spot, this is what might have been uh, the survey at the time. But when the election time comes and when uh, uh, parties come up with their manifestos and when the electorate has to make up its mind, that's really when the swing takes place. And we believe that this is the time that our, my party, uh, Tariq and Saf, I feel that this is the time PTI is going to uh, uh, win the election in a landslide. But really, I mean, I have to put it to you, you say, oh, well, you can always dismiss polls. But for example, let's take the state of Punjab, the biggest in Pakistan. <clears throat> you can't really win a national election unless you carry Punjab with you. It has around half a million, ha has around 100 million people living there, about half the population of Pakistan. It's held by the ruling PMLN. In February, your party lost badly by a considerable margin in a by-election. Only in February. It does not bode well for you, Imran. Khan. Zen, in by-elections in Pakistan, if you look at our history, uh, always the, the, the party in power wins the by-elections. Uh, when PMLN was in the opposition uh, in, uh, between 2002 and 2007, they lost all the by-elections to PMLQ but won the general election. And same with the People's Party. When that was in power in between 2008 and 2013, they won most of the by-elections. So um, by-election is not a good in indicator, but it is the, the rising popularity of a party. As you get close to the, uh, the elections, which party is on the ascendant? And I think if you look at the polls, if you go back uh, a year ago, PTI was much further down, and now it, it is going up. And if you take a poll right, right. now, it's yeah. probably level with the PMLN. All right. You, listen, you've positioned yourself very much as an outsider, launching a war against a system that you say is corrupt and unjust. You say, I want to create a new Pakistan. But what is new and different about your policies? Because they sound quite similar to some of the, to the things that the other parties are saying. You know, food, shelter and clothing is the slogan for the PPP. You say something similar. So what's new and different <clears throat> about you? Well, uh, the, the policies of the two main parties have enriched the rich and impoverished the poor. So the gap between the rich and poor in the last 30 years has increased. At the moment, we have a tiny, uh, uh, rich island of rich people, and we have a sea of poor people. The, the difference is getting bigger because of the policies. So how are we going to be different? Uh, I again repeat that we are the only party that can build state institutions. For instance, the most difficult uh, institution to build is the police. Now in KP, in, uh, in the province, uh, Pakhtunkhwa is the province which our party has been in power for five years, Every survey says that the pol best police is right now in KP. Reason being that we have made it, uh, we have isolated it from political pressure, brought in merit, and as a result, uh, the police has, uh, the professionalism of the police has gone up. And the police that was most hit by the Taliban in 2013, almost a thousand police had been killed by the Taliban. Mm -hmm. And it was devastated. Today, it is the best police force. But Crime has come down, terrorism has come down. So I'm just saying that uh, parties that destroy institutions, history tells us they can never build right, the you, same institutions again. You bring but up we your, can. 
You bring up your record in the province of Kaiba Paktunkwa, KP for short, which um, your party, uh, the PTI, has held for the last five years. Uh, let me tell you what Kurshid Shah, um, an opposition member in the National Assembly, has said about your record there. PTI chief Imran Khan had a chance to implement his agenda during their rule in KP, but he missed a big chance. Khan talks about creating 10 million jobs in the province, but he's not even been able to create 5,000 jobs during his tenure. Fair point. One indication. KP is one province out of uh, all the provinces, four provinces in Pakistan, they never re-elect a party. You, they only give you one chance. So MMA got one chance in 2002, yep. was wiped out but in 2008. But this is you, the jobs. You, you know, you're talking no, about I, your agenda. You had a chance to demonstrate that you could deliver, and you haven't. That's the point. Zain, I'm, this is what I'm trying, I'm coming to that. Now, uh, ANP got a chance in 2008, got wiped out in 2013. So today, PTI, all surveys in KP. I mean, I'm saying don't listen to what Khurshid Shah says. He has to say those things. But the indication what, is how if many you jobs look at have all you the created? Surveys, but how many jobs have you created? And I want to ask you also, have you built a new university in KP? Have you built a new hospital in KP? So, first of all, if you look at all surveys today, PTI has doubled its vote bank. So clearly what PTI manifesto, uh, it must have fulfilled its uh, promises in the manifestos. Otherwise, the people would not be saying that they will again vote for PTI. So that's number one indicator, rather than what the opposition is saying. In all the main uh, uh, fields, human development, education, KP is ahead of all the provinces. In health, recent survey, Herald survey, KP is head of other provinces. In local government, it has the best local government system. Law and order, police, it is the number one. Envi environment, okay, it has uh, first time in the history of Pakistan, a province has done so much for the environment, has planted one billion trees in five years. But have you, have you built a new university, a new hospital in KP? Have we, you delivered the jobs that you said you were going to deliver? Uh, uh, poverty in KP has been halved. Remember now, first of all, Zan, you must understand, KP was the province most hard hit by the war on terror. Sure. It was devastated. 70% of industry was closed. I'll just give an indi indication so people know what we were up against. In, 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 in 2013, in all the f uh, three provinces, the bigger provinces, the total number of major terrorist attacks were 99, all put together. In just KP and FATA, adjoining FATA, there were 200 terrorist attacks. KP was devastated. 70% of right. industry was closed. Uh, so people were sheltering okay, in Islamabad. You've, you've talked so, about... So, I, I'm sorry to interrupt you. You've talked about the security situation. <coughs> I was trying to ask you about your social policy record there. You, you look, you've talked a lot now about poverty and inequality. And I have to put it to you, Imran Khan, that you yourself may say things on the campaign trail like this. A civilised society is not known by how many big houses are constructed, but how people in the slums live. Yet you live in a beautiful villa in the hills overlooking Islamabad, which is worth some several million US dollars. And that kind of jars with your message, doesn't it? Uh, uh, look, Zain, if I, in whatever house I live, I live, if it's my legitimate earning, my tax paid earning, if I live the way I like, that's my business. It doesn't mean that, you know, I, uh, I cannot have compassion for the people. I mean, remember, I am the biggest. I'm, I do the greatest amount of charity work in Pakistan's history. Built one cancer hospital, the biggest charitable institution. Built a second cancer hospital. Remember, 75% of the patients uh, which come to the hospital are treated free cancer but patients. But you don't find it a then bit embarrassing? Then the second hospital in Peshawar. Okay. Then a third no, one we in, know that in, you've in done Karachi. That. Yeah, but then do a you university. not find it embarrassing that you live in a multi-million dollar villa and yet you preach about people living in slums this this house was built by me selling my london flat which i earned during my cricketing days i sold that and built this house 
it's no more expensive than that one flat I had in, in Kensington. All right. So I sold that and built this house. Okay. And this, right. by the way, was proven in the Supreme Court. I don't know whether you know that. I was, I was in the Supreme Court uh, justifying where I got the money okay. for this house because the Prime Minister was being investigated. All right, let's move on from your personal accommodation and, and, and the messages it sends to uh, you were talking about security. And um, uh, one... No, but then hold on, hold on a minute. Yes. Look, I mean, this, I again repeat, this, the, the amount I bought this place for was that one All London right, flat which I sold. Okay, you made that clear, Imran Khan. <laughs> okay, so talking about security and the armed forces and so on, one criticism that you often hear made about you, one person, for example, Maryam Nawaz, the daughter of the former Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif, says you are a stooge and pawn of the Pakistani army. Are you? That's rich coming from Maryam Nawaz. Her father was literally manufactured by General Zia's military dictatorship. But what do you say about the it criticism? A... Because I have to put it to you that he, of course, was removed from power in 1999 by General Pervez Musharraf, and you welcomed his ouster, because obviously you've waged a long campaign against him. And um, in 2000, you said you would even accept an offer from General Pervez Musharraf to join a government. This is not true. I could have joined General Pervez Musharraf's government in 2001. He, I had the offer. Yeah. In fact, I was the only party who had the offer who did not join him. And in fact, same General Pervez Musharraf put me in jail. I was the only political leader put in jail by General Pervez Musharraf. But should you... All right, that's, that's, you're putting the record straight on that. But um, again, perhaps you could be a bit more critical of the armed forces. That's another thing that's said about you. And speak more about its excesses. There is concern from human rights organisations like Amnesty International. 2017-18, it says reports continue that security forces were involved in human rights violations, including <coughs> torture and other ill treatment, arbitrary detention, extrajudicial executions and enforced disappearances. Shouldn't you be highlighting these kind of very serious concerns rather than just saying, oh, we've built up the security <coughs> forces in KP and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, Zan, sure. But first, let me just uh, clear this. You said that I was... Uh, I mean, Mariam Nawaz says I'm backed by the military. There's a 22-year struggle behind me. Her father was no one picked up by the military and made a, a chief minister and a prime minister. I have struggled for 22 years. And... If you, if, uh, if anyone um, uh, tells you about, on 29th of April, we had the biggest rally in Pakistan's history. Half a million people turned up. When you have people with you, you don't need any crutches. Uh, someone like uh, Nawaz Sharif, he was picked up by the army. He did not right. have any following. This is about your so, record. So, number one, I want to make that clear. All right. Secondly, uh, talking about the army. Look, the army mm. depends upon the army chief. So General Zia's army would be different. General Musharraf's army would be different. Uh, yeah. General uh, Bajwa. Uh, uh, Bajwa, who's the current uh, head of the military, his army is different. So I criticized General Musharraf's army because I did not... I was against Pakistan sending its troops into the tribal areas. All right, but you get on with General Bajwa... Because the moment you send your army... OK, you get on with General Bajwa, the current um, chief of the armed forces. All right, you've, you've made that clear, then, your position on the army. I also want to put another thing that is said no, but about I'll, you. But oh, yeah, I'll tell you, Zen, why clear. I'm with General... You've made it okay. clear where you stand. But I need to tell you why General Bajwa. Yeah, no, why that's fine. Is he you've better? made it clear. I was not bringing any criticisms in about General Bajwa <laughs> or anything like that, just asking you to speak out more about some of the, the rotten apples in, in the armed forces and the actions that they um, uh, carry, according to human rights organizations. Another thing that is said about but you. But can, can I clear this then? Well, just very quickly. Do you want yep. me? I, mm -hmm. uh, the, look, the, I oppose the army going, being sent to the tribal areas. Why? Because whenever you send army into civilian areas, there will always be human rights violations. You, how can there not be? The army is not fighting another army. It's in their villages there. There are people, human beings living there. So I oppose the war. What General Bajwa, the reason I think that he's the first army general, uh, army chief, he has categorically stated his, he stands with Pakistan's democracy. He stands with Pakistan's constitution. And he is trying to clear up the mess created by General Musharraf when he sent the army into the tribal areas.
All right, thank you for clarifying that. Um, all right, I want to put to you another thing that he said about you. Below Walbuto, for instance, the co-leader of the opposition PPP party, says that you are the estranged brother of the Taliban. Do you admire the Taliban in any shape or form? The Pakistani <laughs> Taliban? Because, uh, look, Bilawal can be excused. He doesn't know what is happening in Pakistan. He's just been parachuted into Pakistan's politics. He doesn't know what's going on on the ground. I oppose Pakistan army going into the tribal areas. I did not agree with that. And because of that, I was called pro-Taliban. So it was the George Bush thing. Either you're with us or against us. So if you are uh, anti the war on terror, that means you're pro terrorists. The tribal areas so this where... is as, as naive and silly as that. All right, but where do you stand on the Taliban, Imran Khan? Because in June 2002, you addressed a workers' com convention in Pakistan and said you were very much inspired by the Taliban system of justice and that I will establish the same system in the country after assuming power. Let me explain to you what the Taliban system of justice was. It was what is in the Pashtun tribal areas, what the system of justice is. And what is it? They have a jury. They, uh, every village has a jury. They listen to the cases. People get free justice. Poor people have access to justice there. For instance, forget the Taliban. In tribal areas of Pakistan, they have been the most peaceful areas until this war on terror. Reason being, people have access to justice. There's a jury. Every village has a jury. It sits down, it listens to two people, and it dispenses justice. And there crime, there were crime-free areas. So but have we you are changed your mind? We... Have you changed your mind now, Imran Khan? You said that in 2002, because this is the Pakistan Taliban, the same one who, in 2014, carried out the attack on the school in Peshawar. 145 <clears throat> people killed, nearly all of them children. We know Malala Yousafzai, obviously, the Nobel Peace Laureate, also attempted murder by the Pakistan Taliban. This is a group that asked you if you could represent them in talks. You declined and said, no, find your own representatives. But I put it to you, it sounds as though they like you. Zan, for one, in 2002, there were no Pakistan, Pakistani Taliban. So when I talked about it, it was the Afghan Taliban. And one thing they did was that they brought to a war torn, destroyed uh, Afghanistan by the warlords, what, what you, if you, if you read a book by Living with the Taliban by Mullah Zaif, he'll tell you they brought justice by bringing in what was the, uh, the Pashtun system of justice, which is a jury system. They brought peace. So, and, and to, uh, there were no Pakistani Taliban in 2002. All right. The Pakistani Taliban came out in 2006. So let's get the record right, straight. Can you and, talk to them now? And, and, and the justice, I'll, I'll just complete this. Sure. In Pakhtunkhwa today, in KP today, in, in police stations, district police stations, we have that justice. We have a jury, and people have free access to justice in, in district. Can it's you very do popular. Business? Can because you poor talk people to the cannot afford lawyers and. Do you, talk, do you talk to the Taliban, the Pakistan Taliban now? Do you think you should do business with them? Uh, the situation has changed completely. After the Waziristan operation, uh, the Taliban have been pushed into Afghanistan. So uh, they're not, there are actually hardly any militant Taliban left in Pakistan. Actually, we have more danger from ISIS because I, ISIS has sort of, uh, is on the borders of uh, Pakistan's tribal areas in Afghanistan. So now there is more danger in the future uh, from ISIS. All right. Talking about the terror threats, I just want to touch on America because um, there's been concern about some of the anti-American sentiment coming from your party. I give you just one example. Shireen Mazari led a chant recently in Lahore proclaiming anyone who is a friend of the U.S. is a traitor. This is a country, after all, that's given Pakistan over the last 60 years about $67 billion dollars admittedly most of it in military aid and yet it's been a very generous donor so what is your position just set the record straight are you anti-american well well first of all shirin mazari has a uh, views uh, they are always within a uh, political party they are views ranging from one side to the other so you know every party has that but let me make it clear um, pakistan has to be friends with america united states is a superpower but where most of us felt deeply hurt is when Donald Trump blamed Pakistan for the failure of, of the United States in Afghanistan. 
we felt that here was a country being a, made a scapegoat, a country that had 70,000 people killed fighting the U.S. war. We had over $100 billion lost to the economy because General Musharraf took us into a war which was not our war. I opposed it. And at the end, the humiliation. I mean, to be, to be made a scapegoat for their failure in Afghanistan, so are you anti which was one of the... Are you anti-American now? Uh, if I... If, if I criticize policies of uh, uh, Pakistani government, am I anti-Pakistan? All right, so you're I mean, not anti-American. How naive is it that if you if you criticize a policy of the U.S., you are dubbed as anti-American? Right, so you're saying anti-American again, again that George Bush either with us or against us. All right. Finally and briefly, Imran Khan, I put it to you that your personal life over the years has attracted a lot of attention. Um, you know, your three marriages, you've just had your third marriage, and you were <coughs> married to a British heiress, Jemima Khan, um, a short-lived marriage to a very glamorous TV presenter. Do you feel that that kind of slightly taints your image as a pious Muslim amongst your followers? Uh, look, our private lives, you know, there are a lot of uh, uh, influences on our lives, a lot of uh, things happening in our uh, in, in our personal lives, uh, which result in, uh, in, in as, as has been the situation with me. I have, this is my third marriage. I, I do not think that has anything to do with the public. Imran Khan in Islamabad, thank you very much indeed for coming on Hard Talk.